Hi, my name is Ulysses. Welcome to Livestream Ninja. This is episode four. In today's episode, we will be talking about Nginx and FFmpeg. I'd like to share with you a fun project that I've been working on on and off the last couple of uh, weeks. And it's regarding two programs called Nginx and FFmpeg. I'm gonna share with you my my desktop so you can see what's going on. So first of all, Nginx, what's Nginx? Well, Nginx is a web server. It's also a proxy server. It's also a cache, a load balancer, and also you could do it for streaming. So there's an RTMP module that you can compile the RTMP, uh, the Nginx program. And basically what it does, it allows you to stream, live stream using uh, Nginx. So that RTMP module needs to be installed and configured. So the configuration is actually fairly simple. Uh, it only takes about 70 lines. I'll share with you my code. It's available on GitHub. I'm gonna make that link available for you. Um, so here we get two main sections, the web server uh, under HTTP. This is the web server section and then the RTMP section right here on the bottom. So first of all, the uh, web server. We're listening on port 80, which is the default for the web servers. Um, the server name is localhost and the root is HTML, that's the web root. And then we are making index.php as a primary, followed by index.html, and then in index.htm. We have a couple of folders. Uh, one's dedicated for HLS, and then we have uh, the type here, the M3U8, and that's the manifest file for HLS. And then you can see the alias here, and it's pointing to home uh, HLS slash live. And then we get the basic header. And same thing for dash, we have the alias and then the cache, the header cache. And then on the RTMP uh, configuration, uh, we're listening on port 1935, which is default for RTMP. And then we have three apps that we've identified, uh, live VOD or video on demand and restream. So first of all, live. Uh, so we're accepting a live, whatever is the incoming uh, RTMP stream. We are, have that on. And then we are allowing the server itself to publish to it. Uh, so 127.0.0.1, if you know a little bit about uh, networking, is actually the IP address of the server itself. And then we allowing anybody to publish to it as well as anybody uh, is able to play and, and see the videos and see the, the results. In addition, we're also doing recording, uh, recording all streams. And then uh, here we have the path. So the recordings are gonna be located in slash home slash video underscore recordings. And then we set the unique to on so it doesn't overwrite itself. And then we have HLS on and it's nested and it's got its own path and then fragmented to 10 seconds. And then dash is also turned on with its own path and it's also nested. And then video on demand. Um, if you were to play a video, a pre-recorded video, you could put it under slash home slash VOD and then you could create a player for it. And then that recording will be streamed from uh, the VOD uh, directory. And then Restream, we have another application called Restream. So Restream is taking the incoming RTMP stream and you could actually restream that to any RTMP server, whether it's uh, YouTube, Facebook Live, uh, Lauza, or any other service or ser server, streaming server, that will accept uh, RTMP connection. 
So that's it. That's the server. I want to show you what that server looks like. Um, I do have a floating domain that I use. It's called yuli.rocks. Uh, I use it for projects such as this. And I temporarily link them to a virtual private server. And in this particular case, I'm using uh, DigitalOcean. And so this domain is temporarily linked to it. Uh, so you may not see it because it's not on uh, later on. Anyway, so in here, I have the streaming server. In addition, I also have a, a web server on port 80. And in, in there, I created a JW player on the page so you could see the result. So uh, once again, if you look at the configuration, 1935 is the RTMP port port 80 is the web server so where you're looking at port 80 right now and I just create a page with a player in it so you could see what's going on so with nginx as our streaming server uh, we could stream to it using multiple ways uh, we could use a software encoder such as wirecast we can use vmix, and that's a competitor of our cache. Um, OBS uh, and XSplit, for example, uh, very popular to a lot of gamers. So OBS is open broadcaster software. And so you can download that, it's free. XSplit is free as well. And, uh, and of course, everybody knows FMLE, but I wouldn't recommend FMLE, it's Flash Media Live Encoder. Um, that program hasn't been updated in a long time, so. Anyway, so you can use a software encoder to stream to this. So we're gonna show you how to do that. I'm going to share my wire cache here. We got the wire cache. You can see it, I'm recording at the moment. I'm gonna go ahead and stream. And then from here, we're gonna use the RTMP because it's much faster. There's no delay at all whatsoever. Delay at so all you can whatsoever. see we so are streaming see. using Wirecast. So that's using a software encoder called the uh, Wirecast. Once again, there are other options out there. You can use vMix, OBS, XSplit, anything that is a software encoder. Now, in addition, you can also use a, a hardware encoder. Hardware encoder. So uh, several companies use it. Uh, there's Matrox, who they have several products, the Monarch series, there's a HD, there's a, Mon there's a Monarch, there's a Monarch HD, and then there's a Monarch LCS for our lecture series. And I think it streams, two different streams, and that's a big difference between those products. Uh, LiveView has a solo, it's called LiveView Solo. Nice thing about that product, it has multiple uh, network connections. So you have an uh, Ethernet connection, we also could connect through wireless, and then it has two USB modems. And the nice thing about that is actually it aggregates all of those uh, network connections. So even if you were to lose one, you could still stream. Let's say, for example, you lose the Ethernet connection, you still have your wireless and you still have your USB modems. So uh, the live view is perfect, you know, if you want to do live streaming uh, on the go, whether you're on the park, in the beach, anywhere where there's uh, no hardware connection. Now, Osprey has the Talon G1, uh, AJA the Hilo, um, and then Epiphon has several uh, hardware encoders as well. And you could also use a, um, a generic hardware encoder. I, I bought this from across the pond. Uh, it's just a small hardware encoder. And it has an Ethernet connection. It has an audio input, a stereo input, uh, 3.5 millimeter. And then it's HDMI input up to 1080, um, 30 frames per second. And it has an HDMI output for those who want to monitor. So you could connect a monitor or a screen to this and you can monitor your, your streaming. In the back, it's just the power, 12 volts. And that's it, it's fairly small. And I've tested this for hours, it's been flawless. Uh, no problems at all. And it stays pretty cool, it's not hot at all. I mean, you could put your bare foot on this and uh, you won't even feel it. 
So pretty good product. Um, so that's uh, another way of doing it, using a hardware encoder. Or you can use FFmpeg. Now FFmpeg is um, it's a command line tool for recording and for converting files and also for streaming. So in this example on their website, you can see they are converting an MP4 into an AVI. Um, there's not a lot of options or switches here. It's just basically take the input .mp4 and convert it to output AVI without changing bit rates, without changing screen resolutions, anything like that. But it is possible you have to put it on, on the command line uh, using all the different switches and all the different options that uh, is available on FFmpeg. In addition, you could also record your desktop or a camera to um, to uh, using FFmpeg. So in the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you how to do, uh, and how to use FFmpeg. Uh, let's see, we're gonna use our terminal here. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to record the desktop. So I'm just going to use that. I'm just going to copy this file. So basically we're saying FMPEG use uh, the AV foundation, which is specific to Mac systems. Now it may be different on your systems. Uh, and then minus I is the, the first one is the video input and then the audio output. So I'm using number three, which is this particular screen that you're looking at. And record that and then we're gonna use, uh, we record it for 15 seconds, that's the minus T. The screen size is gonna be 1280 by 720 and then 30 frames per second and then the bit rate on the video is 3500K 3, kilobits per second. 3.5 megs basically. And then 128K for audio. And then the output is gonna be out.mpg. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna overwrite because there's already a file there before. So now it's actually going to record this. I'm gonna move this so you could see it on the recording. Uh, it's gonna record for obviously 15 seconds because we told it so. To, to record 15 seconds. So I'm gonna open up that file now and then play it. I'm gonna just drag it here so you can see it. So now we have a recording of um, the f using FFmpeg. So I'm just gonna play it. Oh, it's actually going to record. And so you should be able to hear some audio record. maybe. And then uh, there it is. You, you could also see me move that, that, that window. So it, it does work using FFmpeg. So that's recording the desktop. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna record the camera. So we're just gonna clear our terminal and then, okay. instead of, um, our source being a desktop, we're gonna change it to the camera that you're, that we're recording right now, you're looking at. So, um, go ahead and record that. Overwrite again. And then I'm gonna wave to the camera. Hey, hello, hello. Should be able to hear some audio and might be some feedback as well, or some looping. And so it's gonna record it for about 15 seconds. That's done. We're gonna open up the file and then play it. You're gonna hear some audio looping. And I'm gonna wait till it's so It takes a few go. seconds to hear some audio. Start. Might be some feedback. Well. You might some should looping. be able to see my hands moving. Okay, so it's gonna record it for about 15 seconds. And it's done. All right. So the next thing we're gonna do is the fun part. So we're going to go back to our um, streaming server. We're going to use the FFmpeg to stream a file, not just any file. It could be on my local computer, but we're going to use uh, a file that's on a streaming server, Amazon S3. 
So I already uploaded a file out there called rockfall.mov. It's, um, it's just a short file. So we're going to clear again our screen. We're gonna... So if you look at here, uh, I am, our input is this URL. You could tell that it's um, from Amazon S3. And the name of the file is called rockfall.mov. And we're using uh, x.24, 264 um, codec, preset, very fast. And then you have the bit rates and the max rates. And then the audio, this is 128K stereo at the sample rate is 44100. And then we want to send a flash format to this RTMP server right here on our live stream. So we'll see if this works. All right, we should be streaming. And there it is, there's our file. Now this file is short, so it should be done fairly soon. Um, it was about 15 seconds, maybe 20 or 30. But anyway, it's streaming and um, it's looking really good. So there it goes, it stopped and our stream also stopped. So we just basically streamed a file from Amazon S3 and I'm streaming from my computer to the Nginx that's on DigitalOcean. So that's pretty cool. Um, next we're going to capture a camera and stream to it. All right, so I'm gonna clear this terminal again and paste our code. And then basically the same thing, but instead of a file, we're using the camera. So we're gonna stream to it. So we're gonna stream and to sure it. And sure enough, there it is. You might hear some um, looping, some um, looping, some um, looping. So I'm gonna quit now, quit now and then our stream stop. So that is how you stream using FFmpeg to an Nginx streaming server. Now, would I recommend this? Mm, there's other prog uh, products out there that are more robust, uh, more reliable, and they have professional support. So, you know, would I recommend Nginx and FFmpeg for production work? No. Uh, for personal work, yes, I would. I would love doing it. Uh, I don't mind using it at all. So if you're interested in any of these stuff, um, be sure to check the links that are available on the site as well as on YouTube. And uh, thanks for watching. If you're interested, uh, yeah, the Nginx configuration is there as well as the how to live stream uh, using FFmpeg, it's on my site. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.